Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on a number of good leaf node pairs. And in this one you're given the root of a binary tree and an integer distance, and a pair of two different leaf nodes set to be good if the length of the shortest path between them is less than or equal to the distance. Return the number of good leaf pairs in the tree. So distance is 3 in this example. So basically these are your only two leaves, and their distance is 1, 2, 3, so that's one pair. Um, and this one distance is three, these are your leaves. So this is one pair, this is one pair, and also this is a pair. Actually, no, this one's too big, right? One, two, three, four, yeah. So just these two are the pairs. Um, yeah, and then they have this other tree, which they don't have a picture, but yeah. So basically we wanna find all the leaves of a tree and then we wanna figure out like how many pairs are close to each other. And so there's kind of like one way I think to do it that's the most intuitive. And that's, you basically build a graph out of this tree and I've done that in a few problems. And then you can just BFS from every leaf node and then only BFS a distance, this distance far away. And then um, if you do hit something there, then you can add one to your pair. So for example, uh, like in this example, we're gonna BFS from this guy and we're gonna look for leaf nodes that we hit that's within distance three. So we're gonna hit this guy, right? We're gonna go like, this will be one path. We're gonna hit this node and then we won't hit any other leaf node from here. Then we'll BFS from this guy, we'll hit this guy. Then we'll BFS from this guy, we'll hit this guy. And then we'll BFS from this guy and we'll hit this guy. And so you're gonna get duplicate pairs when you do that. And then you just take your result and divide by two. And then that'll give you your answer. So convert into a graph and just BFS from every single node. Um, and then also have, we can also have a set of like what, what nodes are leaf nodes just to make sure like we went from a leaf to a leaf and then just a traditional BFS. Um, and, but the other thing that they don't really, oh, they do mention or they, they don't mention, but the other thing that will fail is for most of these problems, um, leaf nodes have unique values, but here they don't. So here, like everything can have like a value of one, for example. And that's gonna be kind of a problematic because we wanna identify leaf nodes. So we can like store the node itself, but I'm actually gonna store the value. And then what I'm gonna do is, because we don't really care about the original values of these nodes, we just wanna make sure they're all unique. So as we traverse the tree, we're just gonna give every single node an ID. And then we'll just have our ID, the like, unique identifier. So it'll just be like, it'll start at zero. We'll give our root a zero and then every node we'll find, we'll give it another number. So the next node will get a one, next node will get a two, next node will get a three, four, and so on. So we're guaranteed to get unique nodes because we don't really care about the starting original value of these nodes. Like we, it doesn't matter. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give all these nodes unique values and then we're gonna store the leaves in a set. We're not gonna use the nodes at all. We'll just store the values. We'll store the values of the leaves in a set. And then for every single leaf, we're gonna BFS um, and see if we hit any more leaves. And then for every pair we have, we'll increment our result. And we're gonna hit duplicate pairs. Cause like I said, if we start at four, we'll hit this. But if we start at five, we'll hit this as well. So we're gonna get duplicate pairs. That's gonna be kind of the idea. Um, and then, yeah, and then you wanna stop. This also works. I mean, it would work regardless, but this is a, like a, around a thousand. So there's a thousand nodes, but also the distance from every node is only 10. So you're gonna need to be a fast 10 from every single node. So I guess like, I don't know how many nodes you can fit there, um, but it's not gonna be too big. Like if you start at one node, let's say distance is like three. So for example, this could be like one path. I, I think in a tree, um, actually did I tell you, so it's a binary tree. Yeah, so in a binary tree, every node only has two, like three connections maximum. So this could look like maybe like one, two, I guess if, if the distance was three, it would look like something like this worst case scenario. I guess this is possible for a binary tree. Yeah. And then this can have like one more, um, and some, something like this, right? So it's not going to be that, it's not going to be that much. I think that's, this is, ends up being like distance squared or something, number of nodes. I don't know exactly something like that. So if you if imagine if you have this. I think this is like as many nodes as you can have with distance three. So this is like five, five, is like 16 nodes. So yeah, roughly, roughly, I think n squared. And then as you have more, you'll have another one of these and so on. So, okay, so that's what we're gonna do. 
So we're going to have a unique ID that we'll just use throughout our throughout our tree and we're going to change all the node values. We're going to have a set of leaves and then we're going to have a graph. So we can just make all these things here to start. Whoops. So let's make a uh, let's make a unique ID. So ID, we'll start with 0. Um, actually, we'll start with one, and we'll just give the root an ID of zero. Um, then we're going to have the uh, set of leaves, leaf values. So just uh, set integer um, leaves, and then we're going to have the graph. So this will be a map of integer two, uh, an array of I guess we can use either an array or a list. So basically every node is going to have up to three connections. I guess I'll just use this. It's fine. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I think this is everything we need. Then we're going to make a traverse function. It can be void. And it would just give it a node. Tree node, node. Awesome stuff here. So first we're gonna call our traverse function and that will fill out all these things for us. And we're gonna give the root a UUID of one. So I'll say root val equals one, uh, zero actually. So root will have zero and then the UUIDs will start for the children. Then we're gonna call traverse on the root. Um, so what we want to do for every single um, node is if it has children, we want to give them a unique ID because we're going to store the node and its children in the graph. So we need to store that before we traverse. So we can say like, if a node left does not equal null, then we want to give that node an ID. So equals ID. Um, and then we also want to add it to the graph. So graph, um, this is going to be like getter default, I think. Yeah, getter default of the um, node. And then I guess default will give it a new, I think this were, uh, hmm. yeah, I guess I'll turn on this thing. Okay, so I think we can do this. I don't know if you can do it like this, but we'll see. Uh, so if it doesn't have, if it doesn't have like a list of children, we'll give it one. Um, then we can say put, and then we'll give it the uh, child. So uh, this should be node value, and this should be node left value. And the same thing for the child. Maybe it doesn't like this. Yeah, I can't instantiate it. Okay. So let's just say, uh, hmm. so basically what we need to do is we need to get the, the list of the children here. Is it like this? I don't think so. Oh, oh right, I know what we're going wrong. We need an array list. I think that works. Yeah, and I think we can even give it the type. Okay, there we go. And then we need to do the same thing for the child. And this also needs to have access to the UID, which cannot convert from in. Oh, oh yeah, value. Okay. Um, so, so we need to do the same thing for the child. So node left val and then node val. Okay. So basically we're making connection from the nodes value to the child, which should be fine. Um, yeah, I'll fix this stuff later. Okay, uh, and then we need to do the same thing for the right node. So this is going to be all the same. Right, right, and right. And we need to traverse down to those nodes. So traverse left and traverse. Okay, uh, this shouldn't be node left right, obviously. This should be uh, node right val. Okay, Okay. so 
now that we have this, this function, once we call it, is going to give every single one of our nodes a unique ID, and it's going to put it in the graph. But we also need to, we, I forgot one more thing. We also need to put leaves in the leaves. So we can say if um, node left equals null and node right equals null. That means this is a leaf, so we can put it in the leaves. So. So now we can just work with this um, this graph and this leaves. So what we really need to do is for every single leaf, we need to BFS out of it. And then for the BFS, we are going to BFS to everything that's distance away or less, and then we'll add to the result. So we'll say result equals zero. And we'll say for int leaf in leaves, we need to make a BFS and add this thing to it. So you can say, um, yeah. So this is gonna be actually, it's gonna have the, the nodes value and the distance traveled. So it'll be like this. We'll call this like cur or something. Um, or actually it'll be like this. And then we can say, yeah. And then we can call this uh, BFS. So something like this. Okay, I think that should be good, yeah. So now what we need to do is we need to put the, um, and we also need to have a visited set actually. So set visited, integer, visited equals. So this is just like a normal BFS now. Um, and we're only gonna travel to nodes that are distance or less away. So what we need to do is we need to add, um, an array, which is going to be the node, the leaf, and a distance of zero. So leaf distance of zero. And we also need to add that to visited. So leaf. Okay. Now we basically need to say like, while we have a BFS, let's just keep traversing. Let's go to children we haven't visited that are less than this or distance or less away. So we can say in here while um, is empty. So while it's not empty, let's pop the node. So I guess we can say entry equals us. And we need pop left, so pull first, I think. And then we can get the two values. So we can get um, int node, I guess, equals cur zero. And int dist equals cur one. So if the distance is already this, then we can't add children. So we can say if dist equals distance, we can't traverse anymore, so we can just continue on with the next iteration. And then um, now we need to check uh, for this node's children. If, if they are invisited, we don't need to do anything, but if the node's children aren't invisited, um, then we need to do stuff. And if they are a leaf, then we have a pair. So we can say for, or not for, um, yeah, I guess what we need, yeah, I think it's for int child in, and th this, um, for because it's a tree, this, this node will always exist in the map. So this should be a graph get um, node. If child is in visited, we don't really need to do anything. So if it's not in visited, Visited contains child. Okay, so if it's not unvisited, we need to add it to visited. We also need to add it to our BFS, and if it's a leaf, we need to increment our result. So if um, leaves contains child, then we need to add it to our result. And remember, we're gonna have duplicate pairs, so we can divide by two at the end. And then we need to add this child and a distance of one more to the BFS. So add new int array, child and distance plus one. Okay, and that should be pretty much it. So now at the very end of our BFS, we just need to return, um, we need to return uh, result divided by two. And the result should always be even because we're gonna have duplicate pairs. 
Um, yeah, so now the only thing we need to fix is this. So, is it like this? Does that work? Let's find out. No, okay. So, let's see. Put. Yeah, so we should get the map here, not the. Um, hmm. Oh, that's what we're doing right. Um, so we don't. We we're not doing putting. We need to do an add. Yeah, I'm just, like confused. I think we might need this integer still. Okay. So I actually didn't really need the. Now I'm gonna try to do this without like the auto assist in the future. In Java, there's just like so many things that it's pretty useful. Okay, so let's see what errors we get. Cannot find symbol. Oh, all right. This needs to go in here. Okay, so I think our problem is we're creating a list here, but we're not actually adding it to the graph. So I don't think we want to use getter default here. I think we want to use the other one. So I think it's this one. Yeah. And so if this doesn't exist, then you can give it a lambda function. So you can say like this. It doesn't exist, let's make a new array list and then let's add it. And the same thing here. Um, okay, and this is the best way to do it, I think. And same thing here. Okay. So this will basically create a new one and put it in the graph at the same time. The problem we had before was it would give you an array list, but then it actually wouldn't store in the graph. Hopefully that's it. Let's find out. Okay, nice. Oh, I still get a null pointer exception. Interesting. Okay, so here this is a root of just one. So what would happen here, I guess, in this case? So if we have a root of just one, um, let's see where it's actually erroring. Let's uh, use this and put it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the problem is, yeah, okay. So so I assumed every node would have children, but, um, but if it's a node of one, then it wouldn't have children. So I guess, um, I think this expects is zero, right? Pretty sure. Um, I guess it doesn't tell you. Yeah, but yeah, so we can say, we can just check for that um, in the beginning. So we can just say like, if root left is null and root right is null, return zero because there's only one node. Yeah, I think that'll solve our old problems. This is usually why I don't code this stuff uh, live for the bigger stuff, because there's a lot of mistakes you can make. Okay, interesting that it's so slow, but I don't think you can do it better. So maybe it's because you have to use um, like arrays or something in this. That's what they use. Yeah, so it looks like they just use arrays for everything and then kind of do that. So I guess there is like the overhead of using a hash map. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could do that as well. Not a big deal. I think in most languages, it's going to be about the same. So this is just whatever. Don't really care. Um, yeah, OK. So this is going to be, so for the traversal, it's uh, it's linear time, depending on how many nodes you have in the tree. And then um, for the BFS, not entirely sure like what like if a distance is 10 like how many different nodes it can cover i don't think it's like 2 to the 10 i think maybe it's like 10 squared i could be wrong on that one yeah i'm gonna say it's something like this so for every node and how many nodes can be a leaf like half the tree so that's like n something like this not entirely too sure how many nodes you can cover but the basic idea is how many nodes can you cover if you go from one node um distance length I think it's somewhere around the lines of n squared, which whatever distance is only 10, so it doesn't really matter. 
um, and space. So I guess, let's see what we're storing. So in the leaves, we're storing N. Um, in the BFS itself, we're gonna be storing D squared because we're starting from one node and visited D squared. So maybe like this or something. You can't store more than N though. Yeah, so maybe it's just like this. Cause like if the distance is really big, but you only have N nodes, it doesn't matter. So something like this. I guess it's gonna use my stuff again, let's see. Uh, okay, it's too long. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna go with this, not entirely sure though. Um, yeah, space is more clear. It's like n plus d squared, I guess. But like I said, uh, if the distance is more than n, it doesn't matter. And and you're always gonna use n space because because like your your tree, like in a balanced tree, you have n, n over two leaves. So if you have a tree like this, um, this is 15 nodes, I think, and there's eight leaves, so you'd store all of them. So that's that's linear. Um, yeah, going to be all for this one, um, and if you did like it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.